U.S. President Donald Trump slams the appointment of a special counsel to investigate his alleged campaign connections to Russia. Trump calls the probe a witch hunt. A new community sharing startup app lets neighbors rent to neighbors. And in our Music Maker segment, the political flow of DRC hip hop performer Lexis Legal. Africa 54 starts right now. Good evening and welcome. I'm Vincent McCorry. This is Africa 54. Now, with the White House embroiled in a slew of controversies, U.S. President Donald Trump lashed out at the appointment of a special counsel to investigate possible collusion between his campaign and Russians trying to influence the 2016 presidential election. Viewers Bill Gallo reports. A defiant Donald Trump. Speaking alongside Colombia's president, Trump slammed the appointment of a special counsel to look into his campaign's possible ties to Russia. I respect the move, but the entire thing has been a witch hunt. Trump yet again denied his campaign cooperated with Russia to help win the presidential election. Believe me, there's no collusion. I think it's totally ridiculous. Everybody thinks so. Not everyone, technically, including Trump's own deputy attorney general, who on Wednesday appointed former FBI director Robert Mueller as special counsel to head the investigation. Trump has been accused of obstructing the probe after he fired James Comey as FBI director. Trump also reportedly asked Comey to stop looking into his former White House national security advisor, Mike Flynn, who was in touch with Russian officials during the campaign. Asked about those reports Wednesday, Trump was adamant. No, no. Next question. Many members of Congress are not convinced. There is mounting evidence of obstruction of justice. I think the shock to the body is it's now considered a criminal investigation. Exactly who else will be caught up in that investigation isn't yet clear. But Trump on Thursday insisted it won't be him. There is no collusion between certainly myself and my campaign, but I can always speak for myself. A much. cautious answer from an embattled president. Bill Gallo, VOA News, the White House. But well, feeling like his presidency is under assault at home, President Trump has an opportunity to at least temporarily focus on foreign policy. The president departs Friday on a nine-day journey that includes Saudi Arabia, Israel, and Vatican, places sacred to three of the world's major religions. Viewers Peter Heinlein reports that the first stop is Saudi Arabia, where Trump hopes to re-energize the Sunni Muslim coalition against Iran. When you hear about the tough During the 2016 campaign, Donald Trump complained about Saudi Arabia, his threat to halt Muslim immigration and his temporary ban on travel from some Muslim countries opened him up to charges of Islamophobia. Now, however, he's chosen Riyadh as the symbolic first stop on his first overseas tour. Saudi Arabia is the custodian of the two holiest sites in Islam, and it is there that we will begin to construct a new foundation of cooperation and support with our Muslim allies to combat extremism, terrorism, and violence. For Trump, this is a chance to counter his anti-Muslim image. In Riyadh, he'll receive a grand welcome from some 50 kings, emirs, and presidents of Muslim countries, and he'll deliver a message that the United States will stand with them against what they see as the hostile power in the region, Iran. He will encourage our Arab and Muslim partners to take bold new steps to promote peace and to con confront those from ISIS to Al-Qaeda to Iran, to the Assad regime, who perpetuate chaos and violence that has inflicted so much suffering throughout the Muslim world and beyond. Human rights groups have criticized Trump for hosting authoritarian leaders such as Egypt's Abdel Fattah el-Sisi and Turkey's Recep Tayyip Erdogan. That's a sharp break from the approach of Barack Obama, who distanced himself from the Sunni leadership due to human rights concerns. When he was in um, Cairo, delivered a big speech, but over the heads of Arab leaders, directly to the people of the Middle East. Donald Trump has a very different approach. He's going to speak to leaders, people that he can deal with um, man to man. 
This is his preference. Saudi national Ali Shahabi, an expert with the Arabia Foundation in Washington, says Trump's message is just what Sunni leaders want to hear. He is going there to send a message that says that he understands that actually the Muslim, his Muslim allies, America's Muslim allies, are the first line of defense to fight against terrorism, um, uh, which, is a, which is a top priority for him. And he also understands that to fight against terrorism, one has to deter Iran from being mischievous and taking advantage of chaos in the Middle East to further her own political um, ambitions. From Riyadh, Trump travels to Israel, then to the Vatican, completing a swing through the seats of the three great monotheistic religions. He'll then attend a NATO summit and a G7 summit before heading home. Peter Heinlein, VOA News, the White House. Well, in Europe, Swedish prosecutors say they have ended the seven-year rape investigation of Julian Assange, the Australian whistleblower who founded WikiLeaks. Assange had, be had been wanted on rape charges in Sweden, but had been granted asylum by the South American nation of Ecuador. He has been living in the Ecuadorian embassy in London since 2012 to avoid arrest and extradition. The U.S. Justice Department has been investigating Assange since at least 2010, when WikiLeaks published thousands of stolen U.S. security files. The prosecutor says the investigation could be reopened if Assange were to return to Sweden before that statute of limitations for the crime elapses in August of 2020. Now, more than 20,000 refugees fleeing fighting in the Central Democratic Republic of Congo have sought refuge in overcrowded villages across the border in neighboring Angola. The United Nations says the refugees reported fleeing attacks from militia groups who are targeting police, military officials and civilians who they believe are supporting or representing the government. UNHCR officials say some of the refugees have had to hide in the forest for days in their bid to reach safety in Angola. People is arriving in desperate conditions. They are uh, without water uh, since uh, days because they fled through the bush to cross the border uh, without food. Uh, they arrive really sick. We are receiving in the last days uh, a lot of wounded and injured people that are transported by helicopters as priority by the army and are immediately transferred uh, at, the, at the hospital where registration happens. Well, more than 400 people have been killed in the DRC conflict and more than 1 million have been displaced with the UN, uh, UN identifying 40 mass graves. Well, now for more on the influx of Congolese refugees to Angola, Marcus Aikomus, UNHCR Senior Regional External Relations Officer for South Africa, joins me by phone from Pretoria, South Africa. Now, Marcus, uh, one question here is uh, this looks like... Uh, uh, a number that has suddenly just crossed over the border. How ready was UNHCR and Angola in accommodating those thousands of uh, Congolese? Well, um, first of all, um, thank you very much for having me uh, in, in your show today. The, um, the, uh, so far, um, around two, 22,000 um, Angolan refugees, uh, sorry, the Congolese refugees have uh, uh, crossed to the uh, northern Angola since uh, uh, since uh, early uh, April. And um, new arrivals are being accommodated by Angolan um, authorities in makeshift reception centers of uh, Mosungi and Kakanda, as well as, well as around the provincial capital of uh, Dundo, some 10 kilometers from the border between Angola and, and DRC. And um, due to the overcrowding of these centers, uh, we are in the process of identifying another reception center to decongest uh, and uh, uh, these two existing centers. Um, also, the, the government has uh, identified a new site uh, in Lovwa municipality, which is some uh, 90 kilometers uh, from the border. And UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, have provided uh, technical assistance um, to the government to identify and assess this place. And um, now the preparations are on the way to now, uh, provide necessary services. Yeah. Uh, what are to some of uh, what are some of the challenges you're facing as UNHCR, and uh, who is coming into your aid at the moment? Well. Um, at the moment, we are uh, providing um, 
uh, humanitarian assistance for um, new arrivals, um, uh, including food, portable water, shelter, medical attention, toilet, and showers. Of course, the uh, the, um, the shelter conditions in these makeshift uh, um, uh, reception centers are poor, and that's why we urge that um, we we uh, soon as we either identify. Uh, a, another temporary place to relocate the people or, or make um, preparations then to, to relocate um, um, asylum seekers uh, from, the, from the current places to a, a new site. Also, we advocate that the asylum seekers should be um, 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 relocated at least um, uh, 50 kilometers from the border area because of the security situation. So this uh, new site that the, uh, the government has identified is some 90 kilometers from the border. So wow. we are working on to, to make well, that uh, available as soon as possible. Quite some challenge. We'll uh, stay on this story. Thank you very much, uh, Marcos. Uh, that is uh, Marcos Aikomos, is the UNHCR Senior Regional External Relations Officer for the Southern African region. Now, 16 countries have been des designated as countries of particular concern by the U.S. Commission for International Religious Freedom. The Bipartisan Government Commission documents religious freedom worldwide and makes recommendations to the President, Secretary of State and Congress. Viewers Mariama Diallo explains why some countries are on the list including one superpower. Uh, that we for the first time in almost 20 years of existence, the U.S. Commission for International Religious Freedom designated Russia as a country of particular concern because of an increase in repressive policies, it says, ranges from administrative harassment to arbitrary imprisonment. The first thing is to make it clear to the Russian government in words, directly, ideally from the President of the United States, um, that we have grave concerns about the direction of religious freedom, not just the rules, but the trajectory, which has been really concerning of late and played a big uh, role in our decision. Last month, Russia's Supreme Court ruled the Jehovah's Witnesses religious group was an extremist organization and must hand over all of its properties to the state via Skype, Robert Warren. To be labeled in such a way as though we're extremist is uh, clearly a misapplication of uh, the laws on extremism. Uh, clearly Jehovah's Witnesses are not really the target of this or should not be the target because we're not a threat in Russia or any other country in the world, we're active in over 240 lands. Warren says 175,000 people in Russia identify with the faith, and since the ruling, the organization's website has been blocked and no Jehovah's Witnesses' Bibles have been allowed in the country. The Central African Republic is also a country of particular concern because of ethnic cleansing of Muslims and sectarian violence in this multi-year conflict. This week, hundreds of civilians sought refuge inside a mosque in the CAR town of Bangasu amid ongoing attacks by Christian militias that have killed civilians and UN peacekeepers. I deplore in particular that these crimes targeted a minority with the intention, without a doubt, to inflame the violence not just in Bangasu, but also in the whole of the territory. In Myanmar, government and societal discrimination make the Rohingya Muslims vulnerable, some even fleeing the country. Christians are restricted from public worship and subjected to coerced conversion to Buddhism, warranting a country of particular concern designation. The government and the military deny all allegations. In Pakistan, the commission recommended the blasphemy laws be repealed because they are in one way or another a violation of Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The report covered 35 countries, and when it comes to religious freedom, the new administration has to act, they say. We want the Trump administration to make religious freedom an issue. Uh, a priority uh, in its foreign policy. Well, viewers, reporter Marema Diallo joins me now for some more on the com uh, recommendations on religious freedom around the world. Marema, first, uh, a fabulous piece there. Thank you. Now, if we start with the big boy, this is a superpower, Russia, uh, banning Jehovah's Witnesses, labeling them 
an extremist group. How does that sound? I mean, well, I think that's probably why, for the first time in uh, in in the this uh, U.S. U Serves uh, uh, Commission, for the first time, they decided that Russia had to be designated um, as a country of particular concern because uh, because of that, uh, basically, just. You know, the Supreme Court of the country decided that the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, were a threat. They were labeled an extremist group, and uh, basically they had to hand over all the uh, everything that they have, um, not everything, like most of their stuff, to the state. So, and when you saw on the report, you, you saw the person, the representative yeah. from the Jehovah's Witnesses saying, wow, calling us an extremist group is a little bit... A group that operates in over 240 countries, 40 countries. openly, it's not Ex a secret organization. Exactly, and there's it, just about 170,000 people uh, yeah. in Russia, in the yeah. big hall of Russia with all yeah. those people who actually uh, yeah. observe that thing. It's unbelievable. Now, we know that uh, some other places like Central African Republic yes. are seriously also affected, uh, mostly because of conflict mm -hmm. and uh, rebel activities. Mm -hmm. The question is, what can realistically, according to officials, the U.S. government do uh, at least to have some influence on some of these issues in these countries? Well, the, the, the thing is you have these commissions, and it is a bipartisan commission, and they've been around for 20 years, and their role is to basically look at religious uh, freedom around the world and make recommendations. All they can do is make recommendations yeah. to Congress, to the State Department, uh, uh, to the executive branch, but that what they can do is, is do it, but they're not sure what would happen. And I think I'm going to actually print it out just yeah. a few points. For yeah. example, for Central African uh, Central African Republic, they talk about everything that's happening. But for the recommendations, it talks about basically pressing the Central African Republic uh, authorities, mm -hmm. uh, talking to MINUSCA, the, the peacekeeping mission that is uh, in Central Africa, and you saw uh, Parfait mm -hmm. uh, talk about yeah, it, yeah, the head of the yeah. UN peacekeeping yeah. mission, talking about disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration, those kinds of things. And it also, I think another point that I uh, uh, saw was that uh, to ensure that, for example, future uh, um, security forces and police reflects the country's diversity. Yeah. So those kinds of things are things that the, the U.S. can push yeah. and other countries can push as well. We hope things will change. And it's uh, what a shame that a country like Russia should be in the same group as countries in serious conflict like the CIR and other places. Oh, absolutely. Well, There's so much we'll, to talk about, we'll you know. About, There's like know. Myanmar and sure. all kinds of other places. So. Next time we'll probably have some more time. Well, Mariama. Thank you very much, our viewers, uh, reporter Marema Diallo. Now, want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover? Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. We are also streaming our show live on Facebook. So check us out and share our show with your friends or so. And check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Find me on Twitter at VOA Vince McCord. Now, coming up, political rap from DRC hip-hop artist Lexus Legal. Stay with us. My name is Carla Babb and I work the Pentagon Beat. That access helps me to do better stories. Every day it's my responsibility to collect all of the defense news. It keeps our VOA viewers informed. I get to travel all across the globe. Anything that's defense related and how to protect and keep people safe, that's where I'll go. So it's never a dull moment at the Pentagon. My name is Carla Babb. This is my beat. How do you see the world? I see countries in turmoil. I see our planet changing. I see people at peace. No matter how you see the world, you'll get an unbiased and uncensored view of it on Voice of America, on television, radio, online, and mobile. In more than 40 languages all day, every day, millions of people tune us in. How do I see the world? On Voice of America. Welcome back, it's Music Makers Friday, and today we'll introduce you to Lexus Ligo. He's a top rapper from the De Democratic Republic of Congo. His new music video is Kananga Kananga. Here to tell us about this artist and the song is Roger Muntu. He's a host of VOA's RM Music Show. 
Roger, welcome once again. Hey guys, it's been a while. Good to be here, you know that. Yeah, man. <laughs> thank you very much for sharing this sure. with me, and you were actually going to meet this guy today. Or right, right. <clears throat> you've been speaking to him. Exactly. So first, tell us a little bit about this guy right. and this particular song, because it's kind of special. Yeah, this is kind of special. This, yeah. this particular guy that we're about to watch is one of the top rapper in the DRC, if not the number one. Yeah. Uh, the reason being because as many rapper, and he has been inspired by so many other rappers from the U.S., from all over the world, where he is there to write and denounce what's going on in his country, in the DRC. And this particular song that he is, that we're about to watch, is about the uh, the, the communist Sapu insurgency that arose uh, uh, last year as uh, a locally rooted uh, 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 in the Kasai Central Province, the mm -hmm. Kananga. And so many people were displaced, so many places, so many people were killed. Um, so he wrote a song with two other rappers, uh, uh, female, Sister Becky, and uh, the other one, uh, who's also a major r rapper, Oliver Man, to write exactly and denounce what's going on so the world will hear. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is a powerful message, really timely. Mm -hmm. So let's watch this video and perhaps later you tell sure. us a little Why bit not? of what they say in yeah. that video. Let's watch this. Zambe Taranu Kananga Kananga Taranu Kananga Kananga Ye Zambe Taranu Kananga Taranu Kananga Ye Taranu Kananga Ye Taranu Kananga Ye Babu Minga Neti Bakananga Kala 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 Kananga Kala 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 Nzambi Tarana Nukananga Tarana Nukananga Namunu Bosani Kananga Tarana Nukananga Nzambi Tarana Nukananga Tarana Nukananga Yeah Namunu Bosani Kananga Yeah Eh Ah Nakasa Yeah des rouges, mes yeux saturés. Obligé de faire des verres sur une fête, mes larmes ont mouillé. Encre de feu au milieu. La douleur d'une mère qui voit son fils s'est faire trouer. Ni on souhaite qu'aussi la con. Déco, parce que qu'aussi la con. Combien encore doivent mourir pour dire stop Ça suffit. La pie aussi rare qu'un scratch sur un son rap actuel. Kananga en feu en flamme. Nous avons dans la nano Kananga. Talana no kananga, na monyo bosa ni kananga, na kasa ye. Talana no kananga, talana no kananga, na monyo bosa ni kananga, na kasa ye. Yeah, oh yo, we just take a big one. Really powerful voices there, and even if one does not understand the language, you can tell that this is a, a powerful message. Can you just break it down a little bit and say what they're Definitely. This song, Kananga, is also, quickly before I break it down, is also uh, dedicated to the countless victim mm -hmm. yeah. in uh, Congolese tragedy. Uh, yeah. But as, as we said at the beginning, the, the title of the song is Kananga. Kananga is where the tragedy is happening, yeah. but Kananga in Lingala also mean my case. Yeah. So really what they're singing right now, they're saying, God, are you forgetting about my case? Yeah. Because in Lingala, Kananga, it's my case. Ah, yeah, that's right. My but also, Kananga is a place? Kananga is also the place, place where all these things happen. That's yeah. exactly where the two yeah. killing of the two yeah. uh, United Nations investigators happen. Yeah. And remember, we covered that here yeah. at VOA as yeah. well. And actually, we talked a little bit about that on the program exactly. today, about some of the kills yeah. in, right. in, in the DRC. Right. 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 Now, a little bit more about, is this a younger looking fellow? Is he, is he just fresh on the, in the, in, in the, uh, on the scene? You or has the has been around? Oh, yeah, the girl. Yeah, the girl has, has been around for about two years now. Uh, and, and as you know, in those places, it, it's, it's so hard to find a female rapper. Yeah. Uh, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's like that in Africa and so yeah. many countries. But in the DRC also in particular, the parents will not let a girl no, become the no, rapper. No, no. So this is kind of like a girl considered to be a rebel kind of thing out of the family. But Looks like she has a future. She has a future. She, she, she's she definitely has a future. future. She can sing. Yeah. She can rap. Sister Baker is doing it great. Great. Yeah. Roger, as always, thank you thank very much. Thank you so much for having me. And we look forward to another thank piece so like this one. Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, uh, viewers uh, Roger Munto, the host of RM Show, uh, which is a radio program. And uh, to know more about his program, just visit Facebook and type in the keywords. Roger Monto, our M show page, and get more information about some of his featured artists. Thank you.
And now it's time for a short break still to come on Africa 54. How to make money and help out your neighbors at the same time. We'll be right back. Thanks. So. If you've just joined us, I'm Mariam Diallo, and here is a quick recap of today's headlines. In Mali, new French President Emmanuel Macron on his first official trip outside of Europe visits French-led military forces combating jihadist groups in West Africa. In Sudan, President Omar al-Bashir, who's wanted by the International Criminal Court, will not attend the Islamic summit in Saudi Arabia, where U.S. President Donald Trump is the guest of honor. In Angola, more than 20,000 refugees arrived from the Democratic Republic of Congo's Kasai region, where they have been fleeing insecurity and violence since early April. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Welcome back to Africa 54. Here's what's trending. You know all that, that stuff in your garage you barely use. What if you could make some money off of it and help out your neighbors at the same time? A startup in the city of Denver in the western state of Colorado is making that connection. It's, it's a community sharing app called Fluid. The idea is don't make your neighbors buy the stuff you already have. The app allows users to post photos of what they want to rent and the rate borrowers can me uh, message them to reserve. Uh, Fluid takes a 20% cut and takes out much of the risk even for people renting their cars. Well, next up, hashtag uh, facepalm or hashtag smile. As with Angry Birds last year, which went on to gross $350 million worldwide, the event is looking to fill a content opportunity for the world's, world's media and consumers. At the stand preceded the unveiling of the first official trailer for Sony Pictures, the Emoji Movie, in which uh, Gene and Emoji, the team's app with the notorious code breaker Jailbreak, on an adventure through a teenager's phone. Sony is keeping up with a growing trend at Cannes, promoting a film before the festival opens officially. And finally, a new hit toy spins in from out of nowhere. The mania for fidget spinners, the three-inch twirling gadgets taking over classrooms and cubicles alike, is unlike many other toy crazies. They are not made by a major company. Time for the holiday season or promoted in TV commercials. YouTube videos of people spinning them of their nose, their nose, shoes, or one finger have helped drive the trend. Uh, fidget spinners have been around for years, mostly used by children with autism or attention disorders to help them concentrate. And that is what is trending today, and that's our show. Have a good night. Welcome to English in a Minute. Most people enjoy listening to music. But is this expression actually about songs and tunes? Music to my ears. Jonathan, I cannot believe we have to work over the weekend. Did you not hear the news? The meeting for the project got canceled. No work this weekend after all. Awesome! That is music to